Hello everyone, welcome to Ultra Unknowns, where today I'm going to show you how to file a flight plan, read it, and export it into a simulator of choice using my personal favourite flight planning system called Simbrief. So first what you want to do is go online to their site, which is simbrief.com. It'll redirect you to a website called simbrief.com slash home, but that is perfectly fine. Go ahead and create an account or log in. Accounts are completely free to create. However, they do have a donate button available if you wish to. However, that is completely unnecessary. It's completely free to create an account. So I'm going to go ahead and log in, and it'll bring me back to this home page now with my account logged in, as you can see here. I'm going to go ahead to the dispatch system, and I'm going to click on create new flight. However, you do also have options to load a saved flight, as you can save your flight here or view your previous flown flight and edit that flight. So once the new flight page loads up, you will have a number of options to fill in. It looks fairly intimidating for first time, as I remember the first time that I started to use flight planning systems. Uh, that's why I'm here today though. So to start with, you'll have some basic flight information that it wants you to input in order for it to calculate your route and show you what it wants to do for you. So I'm going to put in the base details. Today I'm going to be flying a fairly common route, uh, just in case anyone wanted to follow this as they're a new, uh, new flyer. So I'm going to start by f putting in my airline, which is American Airlines, AAL. If you're unsure of your airline code, you can simply Google the ICAO code of that airline, ICAO being I-C-A-O. So say that I want to look up the ICAO code for United, I would look up United ICAO and that would show me up UAL and American Airlines is AAL. My flight number is going to be 568. You do not need to enter the correct flight number into Simbrief or you can. It really is not relevant there. Now the key parts that are relevant though for both your route and your fuel planning is the departure airport, the arrival airport and the alternate airport. Now I'm going to depart from Kilo Lima Alpha X-Ray, Los Angeles, and fly through to Las Vegas. I don't normally fly this route, it's a fairly short route, uh, being about 230 nautical miles. However, just it's a fairly common route to fly if anyone wanted to follow along with this. The alternate airport is automatically calculated for us here. However, I'm going to change that to KSLC, Salt Lake City International Airport, for my flight today. Most of the fields can be overridden when they're given to you automatically. My aircraft for today's flight is going to be the 737-800. And I've selected that. That is very important information, the aircraft that you're flying just for fuel calculation in itself. Down here you have advanced aircraft options. Really unnecessary to use if you do not wish to. Uh, you can start off by entering the registration of your aircraft, the FID number, or the CELCAL code, which are all unique to that certain airline, or adding in the ATC call sign, which is most likely, if you're flying an airliner, going to be your flight number from above. So then you can scroll down to the optional entries field, which is what is down here. These fields are automatically calculated, as it says here, but you can override them completely by yourself. So I'm going to be flying at an altitude of 31,000 feet for today's flight. I do recommend, although it is automatically calculated, that you do put in your own values if you do know them, because it will help a lot with the fuel calculation for your actual aircraft. I know that I'm going to be having a full load, and cargo will be four for my flight today. My zero fuel weight, as I've filled in this information, I can leave at auto. And my taxi out time will be 20 minutes, taxi in time will be 10 minutes. There's going to be no storms in the area today. However, if there are, you can add extra fuel as you wish. Or if you think your aircraft in your simulator is burning more fuel than it should, you can, of course, add extra fuel. Just be aware of your maximum takeoff weight for that aircraft. Once it generates the flight plan for us, actually, we get given the maximum takeoff weight for the huge selection of aircraft that you can use. Uh, it's one of the great things about this uh, sim brief. So then this is the main part of the flight planning itself, is your route. 
you can go ahead and select one of the suggested routes or go ahead and plan your own based on waypoints and airways that you select to show up on this map or you can even go on to FlightAware, SkyVector, Route Finder and more in order to find a real world route if you wish which is a fantastic uh, addition to this already incredible software. Now this uh, AIRAC cycle part you can use Navigraph or if you have an AIRAC updater which n updates waypoints for your simulator you can uh, modify that here to have the simulator use accurate waypoints as to the current version however that is not required at all. So once I've filled in all of my information including my aircraft, my flight information, my route and any optional information about my altitude and weight and aircraft there I can go ahead and click on save flight if I want to uh, save this route to fly again sometime or I can just go ahead and click on generate flight plan. I'll just cut to when this has loaded once you press yes. So here we are back in Simbrief where the flight planning system has just loaded up my flight plan. We can start to scroll down where we'll find a summary of our flight plan without actually needing to read the plan itself. This information is just base information if you don't really want to go into depth. You can read your route from here and uh, certain block fuel that you'll need for the flight if you do not wish to go into the depth of the flight plan. For some new learners too using this system this may be easier to use at first for you. However I'm going to show you how to read the flight plan below as well. So if you scroll down you'll find another map of your final generated route which you can click on certain waypoints to review them, see which airway they're on. Right, then we reach the actual flight plan itself. Now there's some um, fairly detailed information in this of which not all of it is going to be relevant. I won't cover everything, I'll just go through the details of what you really need to know. You may have seen or be planning on viewing one of my FMS or MCDU, which is a flight planning tutorial of inputting a flight plan actually into the aircraft. I'll also have a tutorial on loading this flight plan in as a company route, but I'll show you how to get this to your simulator today. There'll be certain information that you need to input into your flight plan though if you have seen any other tutorials for using the flight management systems on any aircraft and some of that is relevant from this area here. In both Airbus and Boeing aircraft there is a thing called a cost index which is right here it's in the top right corner of the flight plan which is CI today minus 67 this number varies completely the cost index is basically a ratio relevant to the airline for calculating the cruising speed and fuel however that is just a number that you can input straight out of the flight plan into the FMC later on so that's your cost index there whenever your flight plan asks you for it in the simulator itself as we come down we need to make sure that our flight perimeters are okay meaning our maximum takeoff weight, our maximum landing weight and our maximum zero fuel weight are all higher than our estimated takeoff landing and zero fuel weight. Now I'm going to be pushing the limits with my landing weight today as it's such a short route but I need a lot of spare fuel for my alternate airport so I'm going to be quite heavy when I land pushing the maximum landing weight there and that's why it has told me right here that my payload and cargo has been limited by the maximum landing weight for today's flight. So once you've taken note of your maximum takeoff landing and zero fuel weight and made sure that you're within these perimeters to get the aircraft off the ground and landed safely, you can then scroll down taking note of any other remarks that it may tell you. So other than the cost index above, the next thing that the system is going to ask you to input is your fuel details. Obviously, obviously when loading fuel into your aircraft, you're going to need to begin by adding in the fuel for your flight and actually putting that into your aircraft so whatever you're using to load the fuel whether it is a menu for your aircraft or anything you're going to need to put in the block fuel so 7690 7.7 tons of fuel so once you have that there you'll see sometimes in a Boeing FMC it will ask you rather than 
for the total number of kilos of fuel that you wish, which in this case is the block fuel, it will ask you for plan out of that on the performance page of a 737 or Boeing FMC. That would simply be the trip fuel here. So when you get to an area on the performance page of an FMC where it says uh, plan out of 7.7, .7, you would simply put in 2.6 here as that is the actual trip fuel of what is planned. Then there'll be a section for reserved, which is basically everything that is not this trip fuel and extra fuel here. As you scroll down, you'll find some information on your passengers, payload and cargo, zero fuel weight, fuel, takeoff weight, stab trim and landing weight, of which that is all, just making sure again that it is within the restrictions for takeoff and landing weights. So, so far as we continue on, so far the information that you will need to input and know that is actually necessary, as you can also see some other distances and average wind that you'll get, we'll see uh, the cost index we need to know. We need to know information on our takeoff weight, landing weight, and zero fuel weight. We need to know information on our fuel. And as we come down here, we'll see some more information on our weight. Then this is our flight log. This flight log, you don't really need to follow along with this. This is just uh, giving you information on certain waypoints. This is sometimes good to reference to if there's two existing waypoints of the same name in the world and your system pops up which one you would like to fly to. It's sometimes good to refer to the coordinates here uh, to confirm that you're selecting the right waypoint. However, this is generally unnecessary to use. So you can scroll your way through that where we'll find our way to some more detailed wind information. Really unnecessary for planning the flight in any way however. ATC, this is telling us where we'll be able to contact air traffic control during our route which is also unnecessary unless you're using a system like VATSIM which there is a box that tells you who is online anyway. As I scroll down through all the waypoints and weather that it is giving me, I'll eventually reach a segment called airport down here which will tell me information about the airports that I'm both departing, arriving, and my alternate airport. That's Salt Lake City there. I'll just scroll past that. And finally, at the bottom of the flight plan, we'll start to reach some information on our flight. A few maps that'll show us our route. Then these wind maps, flight level 240 is 24,000, flight level 300 is 30,000 feet. And as you can see, this is showing us the wind direction for certain points and their speed and the wind speed. That's going to help us know whether we have a headwind or a tailwind for a certain route, thus also knowing how long our flight time is going to be to do whatever you want to do, go have a coffee between your flights, take off and landing, or brief the passengers on the flight time for the route. And that will be the end of the flight plan. So here we are at the top of the page again, where I have fully briefed myself on the flight plan. So now I've got a number of options that I can either do. I can go back and edit, if, edit the flight if there's something wrong with it. I can, you know, just cancel this out and file a new flight plan. You can print or view this flight plan as a PDF if you'd rather have a paper copy or not read it, you know, on this sort of shrunk screen down here, smaller screen. You can open it up as a full page document or print it. That's completely up to you. You can uh, pre-file the flight on a air traffic control network like VATSIM or IVAO. However, one of the main things that I'm going to be showing you how to do is get your route into the simulator so it can be loaded in your FMC as a company route. So a company route is basically something that stops you from needing to type in all of the waypoints by themselves and rather you can actually just load the flight plan that you've planned here into your FMC or MCDU. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on download FMS and it will redirect me to this page where there's 
so many options. It's one of the good things about SimBrief is you can export it to basically any uh, flight simulator or certain aircraft. So the two that I'm going to be showing you today is how to export flight plans into X-Plan 11 and into Flight Simulator X. So as I'm going to show you how to load a flight plan into either Flight Simulator X or X-Plan 11, take note that uh, this is for the default FMCs or systems that your simulator uses to load into. So X-Plane uses a format called .fms and Flight Simulator X and Prepared use a system of .pln. Now you'll notice that you may recognize some of the aircraft in this section as well. There is a Flight Factor 757 and 777 and the Flight Factor A320 along with the IXEG 737 and Jar Design Airbus that are all for X-Plane 11 aircraft. Now you'd think that the X-Plane 11 flight plan would work with these. If you see a aircraft that you recognize from your simulator on this list that you do want to use this flight plan with, go ahead and click download for that as well as the flight plan for X-Plane covers the default FMC. These aircraft use custom FMCs that will require a differently formatted flight plan. And you can also find these in the same section here if you do wish to look for your aircraft. So I'm going to be using the example of X-Plane 11 Flight Simulator X and I'll also show you how to copy it to a custom aircraft format using the Jar Design Airbus for today. So I'll cut over to the desktop once I've downloaded these flight plans and I'll show you how to get those into your system. So I'm now here on the desktop where I have downloaded my flight plans for the Jar Design, X-Plane and FSX. So first I'm going to show you how to get your flight plan loaded into Flight Simulator X. So go down to the search bar and I want you to search for Flight Simulator X files. There'll be two there, one that is in pictures and one that is in documents. I want you to click the one that is in documents. So in the documents and Microsoft Flight Simulator X files, just drag in that .pln file and that is done for Flight Simulator X and you can load that up in the Flight Simulator itself. As for X-Plane, I want you to open up your X-Plane root folder which is what I've just got open now here and I want you to go to Output, FMS Plans, click on that and drag over the .fms file that is compatible with X-Plane into that and then you can also load that up in your X-Plane FMC. As for custom aircraft like the Jar Design A330, which I'm going to be using as an example today, go to Aircraft. I want you to click on the Aircraft folder for mine, the JD330X11, and click on Flight Plans for that certain aircraft. Then you just drag it over into the Flight Plans folder of the individual aircraft, close out of that, and you're all done. As you can see, it'll work for many different aircraft as well. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I really hope that this video has been a big help to you. I'll have a series of basic tutorials on using some basic features of... I'll be demonstrating an X-Plane, but I guess it works for Flight Simulator X as well, that I'll be uh, putting out. Some of those may link back to this, like I'll be doing a tutorial on company routes and a few things to do with the FMC. So if you do want to check those out, please go ahead and do so. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been a big help and I'll catch you next time.